mean, my wife and I, we, we've uh, tried to do our fair share of trading off, and he just started surfing last summer, got in the water a bunch together, and just want him to love surfing like we do. Led the charge and they couldn't take it. Kind of flagrant. Night bomb me, I'm on Collins and I'm palming paper. 740 big body driven by my lady. Swing. There's some days I have as much fun on the sand as I do in the water, just like playing with him and just making fun. We got this fort we always play in up here. Just having beach time, you know, it's really like been a really special season for us. That's one of the things I could say about Captain Finn and some of the other brands that support me. They've provided that opportunity. Being with the brand since like day one, um, you know, there was always an opportunity to design fins and make art and do different things. And, um, you know, Mitch Absher was one of the catalysts to that for me and our friendship. Um, it just, you know, just kind of started from, from surfing together and then it developed into, I don't know, more and more of just like, an appreciation for one another and his surfing, I've always looked up to it. Like he's from that generation that got me into surfing, you know? Mitch is one of those guys I think from the very beginning was an inspiration before I even knew him. And his generation, you know, Joel Tudor, Mitch, and uh, Tyler Zekian, just so many guys like that built their own stuff and rode that stuff well. And, you know, Mitch was, is someone that has always, you know, kind of brought such a creative element to things. So kind of starting off with Captain, we did a fin, and I think the first fin I did was like a Native American face, and it was this like really kind of interesting like bitmaps graphic that I found from like a 30s, I don't know, like magazine or something. And then it morphed into a like a Lone Ranger fin, and then I ended up doing a fin with like myself on it with this like military army helmet when I was rider's age, like I was like four or five. Mitch just let me do whatever I wanted, which was super cool. It was inspired by like old things. And this was supposed to be like really, really gold, but it turned out a bit yellow, I think because of the white base. And I just was like, man, I still, just something about it was really cool. We just recently introduced like kind of a, a coffee color and then like this green Coke bottle color. And then, uh, yeah, this, this fin was the original outline that I did, and it was based off of two skateboard tails. So it was like an 80s skate deck was the like rear curve. Um, and then the front curve was this old GNS, you know, sidewalk surfer that I had. Um, so it's like the GNS curve is like this side. And then the 80s like skate deck was this side. I think it was like a Vision or a Gator or something. I just literally laid them down and like just traced the curves. Um, and I was like, I want to try this. And then we made one. And I originally had it really tipped out kind of like, like this one is. So if you look how this one has this like kind of more curved tip, that's how that originally was. And we kind of rounded it um, ju just for uh, a bit more of a, a user-friendly um, aspect to it, so just doing gaff you. We went back to this tip um, in this trimmed down version, which I think really has has given it a new and a, a, like a rebirth, a new dynamic to what it was originally. And I started riding it, and I was like, this fin really works good. And it took a long time for like the pivoty fin to catch on. I feel like I see a lot of them now, but for a long time I felt like, man, maybe I'm out on an island here. Like I just designed something that no one else is going to really like, but I'm sticking with it because it's what, what I, you know, kind of started to like really gravitate towards. And then, uh, yeah, this trimmed down version was fun because I could take the lines that I had already drawn and like almost kind of refine them in a way that like I think is more um, you know eligible and that that lane of like could be ridden in almost any board. I think this rounded uh, kind of more pivoty style fin that that you know I kind of now look at as like for my nose rider so I'd say like this would be like my nose rider fin and this would be like my all-around fin and so since we've made this new model with Christensen, it's called the Tradesman, 
Um, I've been running this in the Tradesman because the Tradesman isn't necessarily like a, a nose rider. It's, it's kind of more of an all-around board. It's supposed to be something that you can ride on any occasion. Um, and the one I've been riding specifically is like 9.4 and um, wants to turn more than it wants to nose ride. And um, so I kind of feel like because of where my surfing's going, this fin's really helped it. Um, and, you know, I still gravitate towards this in the summer and South Swells, where I'm like, South Swells, kind of Cruzy Sano or Malibu, like, want to nose ride this. Whereas, like, with North Swells here at churches, like, it's, it's an amazing fin to have. I think fins play a huge part in, in longboards. You think of some of that early inspiration and like it's just like surfboards the rocker was what was missing like the outlines were great you know and it's the same thing with like i think early fins it was like they were built for boards that didn't have the rocker so it's like all of a sudden you have this flat longboard with this like really incredible outline of a fin but the board just doesn't have the curve to like meet where that fin meets the water you know and so i think that's like really been the, um, the amazing thing of like the progression of surfing in general like rockers and, and bottom contours have changed the way we approach the fin you know sometimes we can get in our own heads about things and changing a fin or even moving the placement of a fin could change really the feeling of of that day or that wave and a lot of times like I'll run my fin uh, especially the more pivoty fin as far back as I can in the box and um, that's the nice thing about having a box is just being able to move it but I'll move it all the way back I almost never run uh, a fin screw and so in the water I, I, I feel like sometimes moving it really can like reset where where my surfing is going at that specific time but yeah there's definitely times that I've t I've t I've jumped into other fins in this fin sphere of what Captain Finn offers. And that's what's so cool about the diversity there is the team is, you know, there's just some guys that are so good and they, they really love what they're doing and they're passionate about surfing in a way that you can kind of go, oh, I want to try that, you know? And um, you know, guys like Tyler Warren who have, you know, who's had a, a lot of fins in general and really kind of loves like looking at different designs and really pays attention to detail um, I think for me and my surfing, like I've always been just a guy that feels it more than like really uh, is into like the design of it. If it feels right, it's like, oh, that's what I want to use. Um, I'm not someone who's maybe as technically like savvy of going, oh yeah, that's going to do this until it does it. Like for me, I have to, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know, I'm not really much of a reader. I never read the instruction manual. I just like put it in, try to throw it together. And if it looks right, I'm like, yeah, cool. I've, I've learned that with building toys for my son. It's like trying to put together this bicycle and I'm like, uh, just kind of wing it and, you know, hopefully it rolls. <laughs> I've seen, you know, people take measurements and go, OK, I go a shaka and a half from the tails where I put my fins. So that's six and a half inches forward, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't know. To me, it almost feels like some days I, I pop the fin in and I'm like, oh, that felt really good. And then just the next day I put it in the same spot and it just feels like it's in the wrong place. And I, and I move it and I'm like, oh, okay, we're back on. Some of these fins fit like such, they just fit like a glove. And when they put them in the box and I can pop it in there and then flip the board over and move it, that's been, those are the ones that I just like, I'm like stoked to have, you know? Well, part of it too is I take the fins out every time I put the boards in the car. So I just never run a fin screw. And then also like, um, you know, people are using like ball bearings and different things like that. Like, I don't know if you ever saw Michiaki's fins, but we did a couple of Captain fins that were ball bearing. Inserts were really cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so my friend Dayton is a motorcycle builder and surfer and I first met him through my friend Chase Stopnik and um, we were surfing Santa all together and he was out there on this Herbie and I was like oh this guy's cool like he's, he's kind of got it figured out and um, I started talking to him and then he flipped his board over and he's like dude check this out and it was like a f like 
a casted metal flame fin. And I was like, dude, this is so insane. Like that works. And he's like, yeah, I build parts for Harleys. He's really into choppers. So I, we started talking and he's like, dude, we should make a fin. And then I went down with him and Mitch and uh, my friend Chase and we all like casted some fins. And this project's like really been really cool because like I've gotten really into making my own little like 3D printed characters. And so I brought some of these little characters down and we like casted a screwdriver, even though I don't ever use the screwdriver, but it's pretty cool like to cast metal, like this is aluminum Harley piston. And then uh, we casted one of the new trimmed down fins. And then I 3D printed the font myself and um, we just, so it's casted into sand. And so you can like use the sand to like, you know, emboss whatever you want. So um, yeah, I've been helping Dayton kind of with the stamp process. And so like whenever we make a fin or whatever Captain needs, like I've been making, making all the little 3D printed stamps. Um, and then we've been designing different things, you know, throughout whatever fin template kind of comes into play and then you kind of add these either fonts or shapes or flames or whatever you know so it's been really been really cool um, to be a part of the project and I think you know hopefully there should be maybe a film coming out about this I mean honestly the weight th this is definitely a really significantly heavier fin because it's pure aluminum I think you could probably lighten it by hollowing it out because it's such a solid fin, you know? Um, and if you did that, you wouldn't really notice a huge difference in performance. The fin itself really feels, um, feels really good. Like I, I was riding a lot like end of summer at Sano, um, just, you know, like kind of slower waves. And it felt like, I felt like it kind of maybe helped a little bit in the nose ride department because there's a little bit more weight in the tail. But um, honestly, like I feel like in a longboard, you, you could probably run this fin every day and feel like you're riding a normal fin. Oh gosh, I, you know, this isn't anything new per se. I think like in the 60s, these, these, this did happen. Um, there are some fins that were, that were casted and especially when the wave set system was out, you know, and that was the only, like fin, like the only way you could really place a fin in a box, the original boxes had like two, um, two like screws that would hold the fin in yeah, yeah, I've seen that. and the box was super wide. Mm -hmm. And I think they casted those early on because that base plate was so technical mm -hmm. that they had to have like the right drill through for the direction of the screw to tighten sense, front and back. Yeah. And they didn't have this peg, so this didn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you know, casting is, is actually really primitive in a sense. Like really, I mean, man, if you wanted to, you could really explore some, some really technical dimension with this. I'm not sure like that it's like an, an answer, like a lot of things, but it's, it's definitely like a unique approach to something that like, I think maybe has been overlooked. And that's one thing that's really cool about this casting is like, it, it does feel like you know, this fin isn't gonna, you're gonna hit a rock and it's not gonna like nick. You know, whereas like, I think fiberglass, you know, it's, it's, it's a little more durable, but it's also a little bit more like um, disposable. You know, honestly, I think surfing in general, like is in a really good, I think the Gadaskis has said this to me the other day and I have so much respect for them as surfers, guys that got to really do it all in their careers and like, they're like, yeah, I'm excited to like, you know, kind of just surf because I love surfing. And, um, you know, I think that's where we're at in, in general in longboarding and even in surfing in general. It's like a lot of people, you know, things are transitioning, changing for them, but they're still like passionate about surfing. And, and in some ways, you know, maybe they surf more because of, you know, maybe it's not their job anymore. It's just like, I just want to go to the beach because I love surfing. So I think that's where longboarding's at. It's like, it's always been about really just doing it because uh, like, I don't know, you just love it. Yeah. It's never really been about anything else for me. So to me, the dividing line is either participating or watching. And, and the sport of surfing is about being a spectator. 
I'm not so into that. Like, I mean, I love watching other people surf and there's time and a place for it, but I think participating in surfing is where it's at. And like, if you're watching a longboard or surf and you're inspired to go surf, I feel like that should be the goal for all of us is like to inspire people, to have fun, to, to be you know, excited about it. Cause it really is something special a lot of people don't get to do. I feel like Bruce Brown or like maybe some of those guys of that generation, the 60s, when there was no industry, there was surfing and those guys were going surfing, they were making films and it was like a very inspiring time in history, especially in the history of surfing. And, you know, because they were manufacturers and board builders and they, they were like, you know, not only in the water, but doing surfing things out of the water that it really like, I think, grafted into that, like a, a really, amazing season for a lot of those guys that I think, you know, s s there's still some of that that's carried into the culture of surfing today. You know, there's a lot of guys like that shape and surf well now and will ride everything. And that's like, I don't know, there's just something really special and unique about that. And I think in our culture, especially as longboarders, you're just, you're kind of more tuned in to just like when the conditions are right. It's not necessarily so much about big swells. It's more like being at the right place at the right time. It's just there's like a whole really exciting new chapter of it all and I think that's to sum it all up with a lot of words I just said but I really think like that's where surfing's at. It's like it's trying to be a spectator sport but it will always be something that really like the strength of it is what you where people participate in it and that's like where I'm at. Like I want other people to surf and I want to see guys that I'm inspired by, you know, and it doesn't matter the generation or the youth, or young, whatever, old, doesn't matter. Like there's guys that I'm like, wow, this guy surfs so great. I love, love being in the water with him, love watching him, but I also want to surf with them. I don't want to like watch them in a heat. That's just not really well, my jam. Yeah. yeah, sick. Wow, it just got really bad. Yeah. What a morning. <laughs> <laughs> what a morning.